Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about the state of the game that actually took place today. The state of the game that took place today was apparently a narrative and a lore state of the game. Now, in reading the comments on the Twitch stream for today's state of the game, it was a little interesting to see some of the comments and some of the queries. And I think this is something based on maybe the last state of the game. A lot of people were probably not paying um, you know, as close attention when they watched it, maybe they didn't make it past the agent highlights because after the agent highlights, they mentioned that there was not going to be any updates for episode three in terms of PVP. And because PVP had one of the opinions, you know, people were asking questions about PVP in the live stream. And I'm sure a lot of people that are PVP centered or want to see some improvements on PVP might be asking. So when are we getting this, uh, these so-called PVP changes? Well, they already said that that was not coming, you know, to episode three. So I don't think that's something that is on their table right now for it, even though that needs to be something that, you know, needs to be looked at. I mean, at some point, um, but what everybody so far in the community has a consensus on is that gear 2.0 is going to indirectly make some transformations to PVP before other systems start, you know, getting, you know, start falling in line. I mean, the whole armor thing right now that's going on, that's going to, you know, have to change because of the way they're restructuring the entire gear system. So some way, somehow a PVP change is going to be showing up. And not only is PVP going to be getting, you know, these changes, PVE as well. So that was also, you know, something that was discussed in changes to gear 2.0 with Frederick on the stream. And then with Drew on the stream last week with Hamish, where they talked about the new weapon and all that stuff. And so in terms of today was a narrative focused aspect of this, you know, the state of the game. Now, it wasn't the most impressive state of the game, to be very honest, but some people enjoy the narrative and the lore of the division too. And I happen to be one of those people. People, 70% of the time, I enjoy the lore stuff about the game. To me, it's not like the greatest, but as somebody who enjoys stories, guys, I wrote a fiction book. I mean, so, I mean, I, I to some extent, I do appreciate, you know, stories like this. And shameless plug, if you want to check out my, you know, my book, ch click the link in the comment, in the description, comment section, somewhere. It's going to be there for you to check out. You can just, you know, read a snippet. You don't have to, you know, do whatever, but just, you know, check it out. It's a thing, whatever. And so that's what we saw today. They just explained a whole lot of lore aspects that people may have missed that came towards the end of completing the level 30 cycle of the game that will be tying into the following aspects of the story and even hinting to potential future lore aspects. So if you ask me, where is this entire story going? I think this entire story is going to a very weird end where perhaps maybe Aaron Keener might be a friend to us. The way they were talking about how, you know, Keener at the end of Division 1, if you go to that little weird mission, there's like a last uh, side mission echo type deal that you go to in Division 1. The way Aaron Keener talks about it, he says, maybe you need to jump in on this. So Aaron Keener is actually inviting agents of the Division to come with him because there have been betrayals from the so-called echelons of power within the whole government structure that's activated a division two to go ahead and like, you know, bring order back. And then there are so many other things that are within the lore and within the story. And from the previews that we saw, you know, in terms of episode three, you have to ask yourself, you know, what's going on here with Keener and the Black Tusk? So these are answers that probably will be coming very soon, you know, in terms of episode three. So this state of the game has to be judged for what it was, a story and the lore aspect. Another thing too that's also maybe a little, you know, confusing for the community right now is in terms of the release date. No one knows when the release date is. In fact, some people had talked about how maybe Ubisoft Brazil, I think I was watching a video um, I think it was Epic Slayer saying that, you know, some people had shown him something that another Ubisoft, uh, you know, um, PR uh, team had gotten wind about the game, uh, the episode three getting released February 3rd. Turns out that that was not the case. And so right now we're still in limbo in terms of when it's going to be released. And so that's the one thing. But I also remember that they did mention as well, too, that they weren't going to be having any day announcement, even in this state of the game. So that's another thing, too, is 
they were just, they already kind of set it up front, even though it's a little disappointing, but it's not news. Like we already knew that last time, because if you guys remember from last date of the game, they didn't give us an announcement of the date. And they also said something along the lines of that. So having established this, I think we need to just go ahead and say, what is the lore and what was the purpose of actually bringing somebody to talk about the lore of the game? And if you go, uh, if you kind of move away from all the emotions and all the, you know, feelings of disappointment, you're going to see something of a sort as to this game most likely taking us further than, Con you know, the Coney Island mission because of the way they kept talking about the nature of the Black Tusk. I mean, Hamish asked a very critical question. In fact, he started asking so many questions that he had to say, oh, we need to get off stream because I want to keep my job. He asked the, as to the you know aspect of, so what is right now going on with the LMB? What is right now going on with the Rikers? What is right now going on with the Cleaners? He asked about the three major factions that are still in New York in this live stream. He said, well, you know, we took out Larry Barrett, who was the leader of the Rikers. We took out Joe Farrow, the leader of the Cleaners, and also took out Charles Bliss, who was the leader of the LMB. And so he asked, what has happened to these three? And the lore specialist guy, I can't remember his name. I think his name is George or something. I don't know, because that's the guy they said that they were, they were wanting to bring on stream and quiz in the last date of the game. So I think his name is George. Maybe it's not. And he said, well, even though their leaders have, you know, been eliminated, they're a little more decentralized now. But in some of the factions, little factions have actually built small factions of themselves and have been relegated to other portions of New York. But in the case of the LMB, he specifically mentioned that even though Charles Bliss was taking out that that's because of the LMB structure, there's still a power vacuum for somebody else to fill. If you look at this from any kind of common sense illusion, what that tells you is the LMB might still be a central fighting unit still, you know, in New York City in terms of the lore and the story. And if they're still there chilling, then what are we as agents doing now that we've gone to D.C. and we've done all this work in, you know, in D.C. because that was the idea anyways, according to them. Agents were sent into D.C. to go ahead and help kind of, you know, pull back the so-called, uh, you know, toppling of the power structure in the United States and, you know, try to maybe fend off all the, you know, the true sons who were pretty much defectors from the military and then even push back the Black Tusk. And so now what is the next thing to do? Because now that we push back the Black Tusk to a specific extent, push back the true sons, are we going to go back and check out New York and see if these factions uh, are trying to maybe start up another insurgence? So I think those are the things that this state of the game was probably trying to answer and probably trying to, you know, sow into the community, but a lot of people kind of missed it. So if you're in the PVE side of things, I think this can be taken as maybe this game is actually going somewhere. And so this is, I think, a buildup for year two in terms of where the Division 2 game is going. And my suspicion, based on everything that they were saying on the state of the game today, is that we're most likely going to be seeing some semblance of opening up New York again. Now, this is a very bold statement because I have no clue what the plans are for, you know, the next set of content. But in looking at the way they were talking at the state of the game and looking at the way Hamish had to quickly abruptly stop some of, you know, the answers and questionings saying, I want to keep my job in that sense, that kind of decision making in terms of bringing out what's coming is kind of above his pay grade. And so that's what the state of the game was today. Now, in terms of its presentation, in terms of its, um, you know, I would say communication, I would just quickly say that they could have done a better job in structuring this uh, in a better in a better sense. I know they wanted it to be maybe a little bit more casual, but because they already announced it, I feel like they should have then, you know, brought some more. Uh, just a, a different depth of seriousness to the table. Unlike, you know, compared to last week and compared to, I think, two weeks ago. I think, no, it was last week's state of the game. And yes, last week and two weeks ago, where they had, you know, Thailander and then they had, you know, uh, the other guys. And they sat there and they actually talked about the changes bit by bit. They showed illustrations. They showed pictures. They showed specific types of number uh, examples. They even showed some gameplay as to how this was going to work. I think this is the nature they should have also brought to this to show us that they are actually serious about their story. Because yes, I mean, we, I mean, they're probably serious about their story, but 
How can that be communicated to the community? And they did bring some nice footage. I have to say, they brought some really cool footage and stuff, but I felt like they should have kept that pace going with the entirety of the presentation and try as much as possible not to lose track and, you know, in some goofing off and all that stuff. But, you know, it is what it is. Right now, the community is in a sensitive place, so everything has to be very, very, you know... Uh, has to be done with a little bit of care. So this is pretty much my thoughts on, on the state of the game. I wonder when we're going to get an announcement. Uh, I think we'll get an announcement soon. They said it's February, so we'll be knowing what's going on very soon. That's not even, uh, you know, a problem. I just think the community was not was expecting something that he had said they weren't going to be presenting today. And so a little bit of miscommunication. But largely, I wish they had just taken that to a more serious level to kind of allow people to understand, oh, wait, they're actually really doing a lore state of the game. They're actually showing all kinds of stuff, which they did. They showed all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, things after the Charles Bliss mission, after the game, and then a, a little presentation. But I think they should have brought a lot more stuff, a lot more concept art that's just sitting, you know, in computers somewhere. That would have really, you know, they filled the whole thing with a lot of the work that they've been doing, uh, you know, open world footage and all that stuff. And somebody just narrating, you know, talking about the driving force of the entire story. I think that would have been something of value to the community that is into that kind of stuff versus, you know, just coming out and kind of doing it in a freestyle way. But, you know, I, I don't want to be nitpicky, but the community is in that nitpicky mood. So that's something that we all have to look out for. I'll get out of your hair. Thank you very much for your time and, con uh, you know, and your time and time and what? What, was, what do I usually say? Audience. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and audience. All right. I'll stop the video now. Bye.